Hey everyone, welcome back to Factor Fictional. I'm your host, Veronica Belmont, and this is the show where we look at the cool tech and science from your favorite TV shows, movies, video games, and comic books, and ask, is this really possible? And if not, why not? Now, I know I said last week that we were gonna be talking about Breaking Bad, and I promise you that we will next week. But this week, we have a huge movie release, and we just so happened to find an expert to talk about it. Of course, I'm talking about Elysium. Now, this is the brand new Matt Damon movie. He's trying to get off planet Earth, which is machine controlled, poverty stricken, basically a living hellhole. And he's trying to get to the space station Elysium, which is like this beautiful utopian society. Everything that humanity could possibly want out of a space station. Not the cramped quarters that we see in the ISS. This place is like posh, let me tell you. And Elysium is a version of the Stanford Taurus design, which is a space habitat proposed by a 1975 NASA summer study at Stanford University, its namesake. So today we're talking to space habitat architect and co-founder of the Copenhagen Suborbitals, Christian von Bengtsen, to find out if a Stanford Taurus space habitat is something in our future. So what got you interested in space travel and exploration? I guess it's been with me like most of my life, but actually when I started studying architecture, I just found out actually that architecture was actually um, being a part of the development process, you know, having a different approach than the engineers. So um, that really got me into the game of uh, space and, and habitation because as an architect, habitats and, uh, you know, the well-being of human beings is, of course, in focus. Now, uh, in your professional opinion, uh, what do you think would be a better idea for, for humanity? Should we, you know, build a space station and live there, or should we do something like terraforming Mars? Well, that, it's all very good questions. I mean, um, if, you, if you build a space station, I guess uh, there's a limit to how many people you can actually uh, have, have on that space station, and there's a lot of difficulties, you know, getting that thing running. Uh, being on a planet is obviously maybe the next best thing, but uh, then again, terraforming Mars, I guess that's a big deal as well. I mean, um, the science behind that and getting that working, uh, of course, is, is a bigger deal than building a space station. But if you manage to do it, obviously, I would rather be on Mars than on a space station. Is, is it possible that the transportation of tools and materials to actually build the space station would be more difficult than, than running it and living in it and taking care of it? It seems like the biggest problem in having a space station is just building it. Yeah, um, one thing is that if you're having a space station, you know, with the with the purpose of science, um, I think you're more reluctant to accept that you're going to be, uh, you know, launching a lot of materials and stuff and, and scientists on a regular basis. But if you're having a, a design like the Stanford Taurus, um, it kind of does not make sense if it's not a sane, sustain, self-sustainable system. Mm -hmm. uh, if if you're having ten thousand people or a hundred thousand people living there. You, if you do the math, you kind of need to launch every single day just to, do, to provide food and water and, and oxygen. And then, and, and by having that big, you know, infrastructure going there, it, it really doesn't make any sense. So, um, so you need to fix that. You need to, to, to make it a system that is self-sustainable and you need to make it like a, a system that can actually run by itself. Otherwise, for, for me, it really doesn't make any sense. Right, so it would be impossible to constantly be shipping up food and water and and even oxygen. I mean, it would be it need, would it need to be the kind of thing where you can grow your own food, have some kind of inter interstation like recycling program, I guess, to, yeah. to make sure that it always has clean and breathable air, water to use, and of course, you know, food to to support that many people. Absolutely. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense at all. I mean, in the Stanford Taurus, if you if you look at the design, the concept, of course, you see there's a lot of like. Um, there's a lot of crops, there's a lot of forest and, and green, uh, and so you, you're going to have a, a self-sustainable system that can actually provide the food for the people, but also perhaps the oxygen and take care of the carbon dioxide. Uh, so, of course, uh, when they came up with this design, with the NASA scientists and, and the people working this, uh, they had this thing in mind because it doesn't make any sense if you need to you know, run it from Earth, basically. How does a design like the Stanford Taurus provide gravity for the inhabitants of the space station? Well, the basic premises for the uh, for the Stanford Taurus and, and all the earlier designs by, for instance, Bernard von Braun is that the Taurus, of course, is rotating about its center and and, and by that it's it's creating an artificial gravity. So, and that's how, how, how you get that. 
So how far away do you think we are from having a space station like the Stanford Taurus design or, or like any of the other designs that have been thrown around out there? Is that something that would happen? I mean, we obviously have the ISS, um, but it's nowhere near like the kinds of space stations we see on, in science fiction movies like Elysium. Um, so what, what would be your guess if you had to make one? We're not going to be building a Stanford Taurus within like next week or uh, within 100 years, I believe. Um, but. The, the, the movie Elysium, who is uh, kind of, you know, checking out the Stanford Taurus design uh, as one of the concepts, is about, what, 150 years, roughly. It's 21, uh, 21, 59, yeah. You know, s some part of me is kind of, you know, will be disappointed if we not, as human beings, are able to actually create a, a project like this. I don't know if it's going to be as big as 100,000 people, but at some point, uh, I'm pretty sure we're going to have a large colony somewhere. I, I hate to be the pessimist, but for me, I think it's going to be like the Earth has basically gone to hell in a handbasket, and that's our only <laughs> hope. We have to build like basically a space station that serves as an ark for humanity for the rest yeah. of time. <laughs> so overall, I'm thinking this sounds pretty optimistic for having some sort of space station, at least by the time period that Elysium takes place. What do you think? Is this a fact or a fictional? I truly hope that it's possible within like 150 years to, to, to pull off a project like this. Maybe not that big, but um, close to it. Um, but then again, you never know what's going to happen. And um, right now, I hope that we're going to see a boost anyway in the space arena, so we're going to have a new optimism and people want to prioritize actually space. So it, it might not be unrealistic, but then again, it's, it's a big project to pull off. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. So yes, I am going to say that a Stanford Taurus space station design, like we see in the film Elysium, will be fact. I'm saying this because in 150 years we'll all be dead and you won't be able to yell at me and you'll never know if I'm right or not. So suck it, internet, what? But anyway, next week we are having an episode on one of my favorite shows, like I mentioned, Breaking Bad. So make sure you check back at youtube.com slash techfeed for that episode and much more new episodes every Friday. Oh, and hey, by the way, we are having a little contest over here on TechFeed. If we get to 100,000 subscribers, we are going to give away a brand new iPad mini. How do you win it, you ask? Well, you have to send us a message on social media, either on Twitter, or on Facebook with the hashtag TechFeedMe telling us about your favorite show and episode on that show in order to win. Use mine. I can't say if it'll help you win more, but maybe. I have no basis for that. Let's do it anyway. Let me know what you thought of this episode and what you want to see on a future show by tweeting at me, at Veronica, or leaving a comment in the YouTube comments down below here. I'll see you next time.